Hi, Dan Farmer, Regional Manager for the Central Coast New South Wales Business Chamber. Well, it's been a busy day. We're about to flick off the lights and head on home. But one thing we got done earlier today was an interview with Frank Samet. Frank is the newly elected president of the Central Coast Regional Advisory Council. For those of you who are unaware, the Central Coast Regional Advisory Council is essentially that voice for policy and advocacy for the private sector organisations in this region. Let's get into the interview now. So newly elected as president of the Central Coast Regional Advisory Council, but um, nothing's new. You've been here for 12 years. That's right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, Do you want to just um, let everyone know about uh, your history with the Chamber? Yeah, so I uh, started with the Chamber when I was working uh, with um, Sarah Lee yep. uh, back in 2005, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took the place of uh, the managing director who was at, uh, prior to that uh, a, a regional pre uh, a president. And uh, yeah, so uh, I've, I've been uh, with Sarah Lee, was there for about four years, and after I left Sarah Lee, I started my own consultancy, but I kept, uh, I joined the um, chamber as a, a member, and uh, and continued to uh, be part of the RAC, and I've been vice president for about six years. Excellent. So Excellent. Uh, yeah, I've, I've had a bit of history, uh, two regional managers, mm. um, and three um, uh present so uh, yeah so I'm really privileged to be able to, uh, to follow the footsteps of my uh, predecessors. I explained at the start of this uh, video for, for those that don't know exactly what the RAC is but um, as an advisory council to the business chamber for someone that's been in business so long what does the, the, the advisory council mean for you as a business person? For me initially it's about supporting you and, and, and helping you in terms of what you're doing in the region and particularly from a policy perspective. It's about engaging the, uh, the, the thoughts and uh, the, uh, the Regional Advisory Council in relation to direction for the re region as well. So it is a policy piece but it's also more around uh, what business needs in the region. Um, and so to me that's, that's, that's been my focus uh, as part of the Regional Advisory Council. Um, I have a passion around industry, in particular manufacturing, and, and um, I've been fortunate to be able to uh, have a spot uh, uh, on the agenda to uh, really you know, talk about what's happening in the region in that area. But ultimately it's about you know, driving economic development for the region, creating jobs, uh, which, is, you know, which is really important for us. If I was to ask the question, not so much about the Advisory Council, but more about the region, We've obviously just um, had uh, a brand new council elected. We've now got a single Central Coast voice. For the region itself, um, over your tenure, what would really be your vision going forward and what are the key priorities? Well, look, I think just, just on that point of uh, one council, we were pretty instrumental in getting the ABS data for the region, so having it separated out. So that's, I think that's a key step for us, to really understand what this region's about and not being lumbered in with, you know, Newcastle or, or uh, North Sydney. So, look, going forward, there are, you know, clearly the New Council is, is the, the, uh, the opportunity, I, I would call it, um, something we've uh, discussed and fought uh, hard for. I mean, the, the NBN is a, a, another problem, and just having the recent survey done really highlights that there is, a, you know, it's a big impost to business, and uh, we really need to get on top of it. For our region, we were... You know, earmarked to be one of the first regions to do this, but you know it was very much a domestic implementation as opposed to a business implementation, and, and to some extent, you know, we were influential in trying to get some of these uh, business areas done as well. But to me, you know, that's that's critical for the future. I mean, it's we're in a digital economy; doesn't matter what space you're working in, uh, and we need to have that con connectivity at you know at appropriate rate. Um, Look, I have some, some personal things that I think, you know, that they do flow into uh, the Regional Advisory Council around, you know, the, I call it um, employment uh, opportunities. So, yes, we have high unemployment, but, uh, but we also have, you know, uh, uh, students coming out of universities and tech that are probably not work ready. Mm. So, uh, you know, there, there's this whole bucket of uh, having um, the right workforce. Uh, and, and that's a makeup of you know the educated people through universities and TAFE through to people who are doing trades and, and so forth. And then how do we engage with the unemployed people to get them in that space? Which is going to be difficult given where the digital technology is taking you know uh, jobs mm. and it impacts every sector of the economy. So the good thing about the business chamber is very well recognised as a place to go. You know from a government uh, council even you know perspective when, when 
uh, there's a need to engage with industry and business in particular. The Regional Advisory Council in its current makeup cuts across many different sectors. It does. We've yeah. got representation from other local chambers of commerce um, and, and industry experts. Um, that opens up doors for businesses to come and have that conversation if they're feeling like they're having any challenges across uh, any areas, whether it be at a policy level, at an operational level, um, at, at, at that people level in terms of employment, which you mentioned. Do you feel as though your role as president is one to be able to get out and have that conversation with businesses? Yeah, well? look, I, I think that's uh, one of the things that the RSC um, will continue to do um, is, you know, be out there so people know that they, you know, they're around, they can, can go talk about you know, issues that impact. And I think it's really, really important so we can feed that back, mm. you know, through the system. Um, you know, we've got the state election coming up in, the, in 2019, so, you know, this, this is the time for the RSC to really get out there. But, you know, we need to look at our, our particular issues and, and what do we want to push and make sure that this region is properly represented and, and we get what we need, uh, you know, from uh, whoever comes into play, into party, um, into power uh, in uh, 2019. So, you know, and I think this is where the RSC has a, a very critical role to play. You know, it is very representative across a whole uh, range of sectors within uh, within business, uh, and getting that feedback and more localised feedback uh, to ensure the policy direction that's set does encompass what we need to uh, to cover for our region. So yeah, I, that to me is going to be instrumental, even from a federal point of view. Um, you know, the, around the strategy for the region, you know, we need to we do engage quite well with you know the RDAs and the state government, the Office of Regional Development, those sort of. Uh, um, organisations, but we need to be continue to be influential in in that, in that policy direction, if you like, in the strategy direction. I certainly see the next couple of years uh, being out there a lot more uh, myself personally, but also encouraging the RAC to be uh, be out there and and, and bring you know, make contact with uh, other business owners. Um, it's a good way of promoting what we do as well and being able to. Um, you know, to really you know, show some of the outcomes that we, uh, we've been able to deliver. Absolutely, and that's a really strong point because we, we've quite often been strong as a chamber movement uh, in those uh, state policy areas such as infrastructure, uh, most certainly payroll tax yeah. and, and other um, you know, taxes on employment and bringing it back down to the regional level. Uh, whilst all of those things are absolutely important and I think the advisory council over the years have done an amazing job. If you were to drive around the central coast, yep. you'd see all of the roads infrastructure that's um, yep. uh, underway and, and we are the ones banging the drum uh, a lot of the time with that. So very much a, a credit to the advisory council in its past. But y your point is absolutely strong. We need to make sure we've got a strong local and focused agenda. If you were to say that from your experience, there's a few other things out there that are probably need to be put on the agenda that aren't on the agenda going forward, is there any particular focus that you'd like well, to Well, yeah, I, and, you know, uh, through my, in my current role, I mean, one of the things I'm seeing is we, we talk about enticing business and industry to the region, but we don't have serviceable lands, mm. you know, so that's a, that's a big, big issue. You know, if we want companies and we want to grow jobs in the region, we need some of the bigger players here, and, and, and I know we're predominantly an SME region, but, you know, there's a, a role for big business to play and there's an opportunity for the coast to be able to service big business that need to relocate out of Sydney given the, the pressures that are there. So it's probably more a council area, you know, local council problem, but I think we need to engage all levels of government around this because, you know, we talk about, um, you know, encouraging businesses to move and yes if you're a small business there's plenty of small factory units around and even then it's it's they're coming becoming scarce but you know we need we need all serviceable lands and uh and that's that's a big challenge i mm. think for us um and even uh you know when we talk about uh you know we've got a plateau that's uh, really ripe for uh, for the picking in terms of being a grow to grow the agricultural sector um, in that area, but then that, that's got its own problems, you know, around, you know, you need people to, to pick fruit or, you know, to, do, uh, to, to work the farms, you need accommodation. So there's a number of issues there which are all, I think all are related to, you know, how we, we set the region up going forward. So, um, you know, being, if we really want to make the region, uh, the, the strategy is around economic development and, you know, bringing, growing jobs, the so industry's got to play a part in that. Mm. And so how do we, you know, create the environment to make it easier to get 
to be able to, to relocate here. And we've got companies now that are on the, uh, in the region that want to expand and they can't find sites to expand to. So that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a real problem. Mm. It's happening today. Yeah, you know, current, current yep. yeah. So I, you know, and you know, we have, you know, there's a risk that we might lose those companies because they'll find land somewhere else, mm. which is what we don't want. You know, so I think there's a number of things there. Um, it's about positioning the region you know, for the right strategy, and I think you know, uh, again, there's this the, the coast has, has got has underpinned. I suppose the, the Redis strategy has been the underpinning document for the region, which is great. It's probably, one, I think, is the only region that has a strategy that's been in play for, for what, five or six years now and, and everyone's working to it and I think that's just the side point there. There's been a lot more collaboration in the region and because of that document too, I think. so. But, yeah, we need to start tackling some of these other issues um, you know, if we're really serious about you know, economic development and what role does industry play and, and business and then, then there's tourism, of course, which has always been on the agenda. Um, but, uh, you know... Real job growth's got to come from somewhere, and, mm. and it's, you know, you've got to provide the uh, environment for it. You mentioned collaboration. I mean, collaboration's always been um, a cash cry for yourself around uh, yep. some other areas you work in. How important is that collaboration for a region such as the Central Coast um, in moving forward? Well, I think having a unified voice is really important. So I think the big tick we've got is one council, mm. right? I think the other agencies are now starting to work more closely together. So we've still got a few more years, I think, to get the council in line, unfortunately, because it's it's new and you know uh, there's still a lot of stuff happening within the amalgamation. But to me, having one voice means that we're we're a stronger community. And so when we go, you know, we're going for funding or whatever we want representation for, we're actually you know we should be um, we're stronger because of having the one voice. Um, you know, having uh, a representation of the uh, university on the RSC is a big plus for the ROC uh, and the relationship with the business chamber um, with the university through the economic breakfast and the innovation summit it was the start of that and I think you know and certainly I've had some dealings with the university in recent months it's all heading in the right direction so I think it's going to be an exciting time you know with that collaboration model. Look and having chambers uh, members uh, regional uh, sorry uh, the the uh, Smaller chamber part of the ROC is really important as well because the message gets out there. It's the same message, uh, and one of the things I'd like to see and, and I will be pushing for is um, you know some more involvement of the ROC in some of those other chambers, which which they are. But certainly from my perspective, I want to get around and just see what the chambers are doing and to promote what the ROC does. So I think that's uh, that's important in this whole movement of um, having one voice. Uh, it's an ex- exciting time. I think the region is uh, really on the cusp of doing some really great things and uh, the Chamber and the ROC will be right behind it, So, which, I, which is really important. And, and you know, it's been instrumental in getting to, to where it is today, so I'm really pleased to be part of that movement. Absolutely. Well, I've enjoyed working with you for eight years. I don't know whether we're going to make another eight years together. Um, well, yeah, well, hopefully. In your yeah. volunteer capacity, we might have to get your job here or something like that. But um, uh, really appreciated working with you over the time. We look forward to this next tenure.